Hello everyone, Mr. Markage here, and today I'm going to show you the new ways of doing things uh, which you may have done on the old version of Discord.net, which now changed quite a lot, so you don't actually know how to uh, update it yourself or things like that. So I'm going to show you a lot of important things that you might have used in your old bot and how to get them working again. Uh, some of these things are deleting messages, um, grabbing all the emotes, um, accessing the server from the message, which has now been taken away. Um, banning people, kicking people, things like that. So, all the good stuff. Um, so, what I've got is obviously this is the a bot base with only the embed command in from last time, um, which I showed you how to get the embeds working. So, obviously the the bot's empty. We need to add stuff to it. Uh, so, what we'll do is we'll get started with deleting messages. Uh, this can be done two ways. You can see it's this the standard layout. If this it contains a space, then it's a double command in my that's how I class it and then if not it's a single one and we'll just put it here for that so we'll say case and we'll just call it purge and what literally before we'd we'd loop through all the messages so we'd have like a for loop so we'd say for each message in download the messages delete this time it's just one line so all we'll do is we'll use await uh, message dot channel delete messages async and you can see we need to give it a the list of messages so what we'll do is we'll just have it in here so inside here we'll say await uh, message dot channel dot this time we want to get the messages so we'll get the message not get message messages and then inside here we pass the number of the messages we want and like before there's a limit of a hundred in there and then after that we'll just type dot flatten and then that's literally it what that's going to do is go ahead and delete 100 messages from the channel um, what you could act actually do is have this in like a double command and let the admin why why don't we just go ahead and do that so we'll delete it from here and then what we'll do is we'll put it in a double command just up here and then what we'll do is we'll allow the admin to pass the number through the command so because it will be a string the argument we need to convert it we'll just use cint uh, that should convert it to an integer for us and we'll just say arg and then what that now lets us do is type purge 50 or something and then it will delete 50 and then that's how you do it and maybe if you want you can send a message after saying successfully deleted 50 messages or whatever that's entirely up to you if you want to display that uh, so that's it for deleting commands next what we'll do is I'll show you how to uh, go in and access the server because before all we'd do is we'd type message dot channel and after that we'd be able to type dot server in this case you'd think because everything got changed to guild you'd think of be dot guild but it doesn't exist you can't actually access the server uh, but the way to do it is we're going to cast it to a guild channel or, or a guild it doesn't really matter which one and then we'll, we can access it through that so uh, for that command let's just say we'll go ahead and do the emotes one uh, what this does is basically lists or shows every single emote in the uh, server so what you do is you say case we'll just say emote or emotes and actually for this one we don't need an argument so we'll go ahead and put it down in the single one and then all we're going to do is we're going to have a little uh, for each statement we'll have for each we'll just call it emote as an emote in well, this is where we're going to do the cast direct cast and what we're going to do is convert the message dot channel or message dot channel and we're going to cast it to an i guild channel then after that we can now type dot guild and then have access to the guild from this we just want to take the emotes because we're looping for each emote and now this is where we get to decide what we want to do for each one um, obviously we don't want to send each one here because then it will send like let's say you have 50 it will send 50 different messages so what we can do is say dim emotes as a string and it will be equal to nothing and then in here we'll just uh, we'll say emotes 
is equal to itself and then we'll add on the next emote in it so then emotes of the strings going to be equal to like all of them in one and we'll send it just in one message uh, so if you've ever done the thing with discord where you send the emote as the ID and things um, it's usually like this you do the two uh, arrow things you have one of them then you have the name another one then you have the ID so it's something like that um, this is essentially what we're going to do because we got access to each one so we'll say um, we have this as a string then we're going to add on the emote dot name then we're going to add on the extra colon and then we'll add on the ID uh, emote dot ID and then after that we just add on the final uh, little arrow and then that's good to go and then after we've we've done or completed the loop we'll send the message away uh, message dot channel dot send message and we'll just send the emote string back to the channel and now what that's going to do um, is send every single emote in the server if you have any this is like for custom ones to the uh, to the channel in a message which is quite nice and actually the emote ID isn't a string um, I'm not sure if it will matter too much but just to be sure we'll say CSDR and convert that to a string anyway just to be safe and then that should be good so that's how you access the server or the guild now we're using direct cast because we use that quite a lot in 0.9.6 we used to access the guild a lot let's say to get the roles um, to ban a user and all things like that so this is why it's important to have it again uh, and now I have it this is where we can start getting the bots good again uh, so next thing let's say we actually want to kick or ban a user or something like that um, what we'll do is we'll have a double command uh, just like this we'll say case ban and what we'll do is get that over there we'll say await and just to copy this to be easier we'll copy that direct cast and what we'll do is we'll say guild and then add a ban and then you can add the ban or the user's ID in this case for this command what we'll do is mention them uh, so what we can say is message dot mentioned users dot first or default because we're only gonna uh, ban one at a time um, if you wanted to do multiple banning in one message you can change this up a little bit but we'll just have ban user and then it'll ban them simple as that and obviously you could send a message saying this user was banned if you really want it again that's up to you and then also you've got uh, kick case kick but this time you don't do it through uh, cast into the server what you'll do this time is convert the message dot author because we want to access the user uh, and we'll convert them to a socket uh, socket guild user and after that what we can actually do is access that user directly so you can see we can add a role add roles um, you basically get everything about them here we get all their permissions things like that so we can get everything about the user cast into the socket guild user and then here it is kick async and you can see you can remove roles things like that so this is useful for all your other commands which I'll which you can do yourself now you know how to cast to it but for this one we just want to kick them and again you could say kick or whatever there if you really wanted uh, so that's a few of the main things now you know how to access all of that you can come up with things yourself there's one more thing I want to show you and that is how to check if a user has a role because that's quite important we don't want any user in our server to be able to access the ban command the kick command things like that uh, so it's important we can check the user trying to access the command has the correct permissions uh, and that's why uh, this is the most important thing in my opinion in this video uh, so we'll just make this test command for now called roles um, basically we're just going to have an if check and if you remember before we had like if user has role it's a lot different now um, this might not be the best way but it's the way I've found um, and it works just one if check so we we'll say if direct cast um, the first cast we'll make is we'll say message dot author 
I keep typing msg message.author and we'll cast them to a socket guild user again and we're going to check their roles so we'll get the users roles and we'll convert that to a list um, to a list so we can use the con contains function on that list and then uh, we have to check if the list contains something as a socket role we can't just have a string um, so we need to check if it contains a certain role so we obviously we have to get that role so what we can do is use another direct cast here and this time what we want to do is access the server or the guild so we'll say message.channel and that is going to be to an i guild channel and then after that we're going to say dot guild dot get role and we need the role ID to get the role ID let's say in your server you have um, what I'll do is go into the bot usage to get the role ID you should do a backslash and you add the role so at admin and it will send back the role ID so you'll copy that just like that and come back into your code and put the role into here just like that and then what that will do now is check if the user has that role simple as that and if they do do whatever if not don't allow them so we'll copy that if check and uh, delete that so then for kick we'll put that in we'll put it in for all of these because they're all quite important commands and then we'll uh, paste it back in just like that and we'll say else we'll put a message there in a second as well um, so just like these we'll put the actual command in tidy it up a little bit seems I've uncopied it and obviously we'll just say await uh, message dot channel dot send message uh, we'll just say you don't have the correct role for this and we'll copy this message and we'll put it on all three of them commands so there we go now your commands are safe only in my case the admin role can use that command so then if you want to use a different role just show the method with a backslash and put the ID in and that's how you would uh, do that check so you are, there's a few more important things uh, or how to's in discord.net 1.0 um, so I hope you did enjoy the video if you did please be sure to leave a like and a comment and I'll see you next time